Okay, uh, before we get to the uh, messing with the intonation, uh, I just wanted to show you. Um, I did get the uh, trim, no trim unit installed. Uh, currently, I have it locked down. Uh, there's a lot of info. It does come with instructions on how to do this, obviously. And again, <laughs> cannot say enough about the springs. Lock them, or mark them down as to what they are, their position. Makes this whole job a lot easier. Uh, now, one thing I do like about this trim, no trim unit, is up here, you notice it looks like it's off. Well, that's actually the way they designed this unit because they realize that guitars are built in several different countries. And mine was built in China. Now this piece is a whole lot tighter in tolerance than the existing piece that was in here. But you notice the screw placements here, this one and this one are not evenly matched out. And because of that, uh, this is not perfectly squared in the hole. Which means that this shaft is not going to be perfectly square to the Floyd Rose spring plate. So they've made this piece adjustable to where it can slide this way or this way while the pin's in the hole. So mine looks off and well technically it is but they actually calibrated for that and realized that not every guitar is the same and it's not built to high standards necessarily i.e. China. <laughs> so here you go. Uh, again, I just wanted to show you what that looks like when it's installed. And I'm really hating this camera right now because it looks blurry as hell. But uh, there it is. And for tuning and setting intonation or changing strings even, you lock this down. It makes it ten times easier with the Floyd Rose. Alright. Keep watching. Bye. All right, welcome back. Uh, we're into part two of intonation in the Floyd Rose tremolo. Uh, I have to apologize for the layout here, but this is about the best angle I could find with this camera that I've got. I've already plugged in. I've got my tuner on, and uh, let's just go ahead and we'll work on the uh, six string. We'll go uh, open first to check the tuning. Okay, as you can see on the tuner, uh, my needle is right dead center. Now, per Floyd Rose, what they suggest on setting the intonation is you do the open string tuning first. Okay, so I'm dead center now, which is tuned. Then they say chime at the 12th fret. And chiming is basically you're going to hit the string lightly and you're going to put your finger on 12th fret on the string lightly to get a ringing sound, but you're not actually pressing it down on the fret. So that's pretty close right there. Now, the third step, according to the website, Silence of Strings, is to press down on the 12th fret and hit the string. Now you may have to hit this a couple of times to silence the string, and you're going to do it lightly. You do it more than once because your first time around may not be accurate. Just barely tap the string with your uh, pick. There we go. 
Now the intonation right there is pretty darn close to what it's supposed to be. Out of five times of hitting that string, show the intonation three of those five were on. And it's very difficult, and that's why, like I said, I'm partially tone deaf, so I have to use this tuner. But you see, that gets me pretty darn close on the intonation when I fret the 12th. So let's double check our tuning, open string. And we can adjust just a smidge here. Okay. And I'll chime it again. Quiet. There we go. Okay, so chiming and open string is good. I'll fret it. Lightly tap. Like I said, you may have to do this a couple of times. Of course, all the background noise I have does not help. Now, according to the website, and from what I've experienced with the 435 pitch trying to set the intonation, see the needle is, uh, well, basically to the right. You see it's up here, which is telling me that this saddle probably needs to come back just a smidge, not much. And they recommend between... Uh, about a sixteenth of an inch at a time and because that is so close I'm not real sure I even want to mess with it at this point but uh, I want to show you what we have to do just in case it's like right there when you fret that 12th you just like again barely want to pick that string just very lightly so you do it heavy you're gonna be way out there every time so you want to like I said just do it lightly so fret the 12th very light You see how much closer it is? So that's so close I'm not going to change it. But if I were to change it, this is how I'd have to do it. And now I'm going to move the camera around. Okay, first off, if I was going to change it, and again, if here's your zero mark indicating lights here if they're both on indicate that it's tuned if that needle every time I lightly touched it was way up here above the zero I would have to move this saddle back and I do it a sixteenth of an inch at a time and now doing that means you gotta remove your locking nuts up here that loosen the string then you have to loosen this nut or excuse me jam the screw I guess what you would call it loosen that and then slide this back a little bit now the Floyd Rose there are actually three uh, tapered holes 
for that screw to go in. Now, in this one, the screw I had to place in the back position, the furthest back hole. Each one of these has those three holes. So you get a lot of movement here that you can uh, work with. Now, again, huge pain. Um, if you don't have your tremolo locked and you try doing this, you'll be at it all day. It's a huge pain. Uh, so at this point, uh, again, if, if it was off and the needle was forward, I would have to move the saddle 1 16th of an inch at a time, lock it down, tighten the string back up here, or excuse me, you know, tighten it back up, tune it again, and then test it again. And I would keep doing that until I got that needle zeroed out on all three, open string, chimed string, and fretted 12th. Now that process goes into effect on all of your strings. So if you have your tremolo locked, like I do, you can do one string at a time until you get them all. Then once you have them all, uh, just go back, double check them, make sure they're all good. You've got everything locked down. Uh, at that point, your intonation is set. Um, now, <laughs> silly me, uh, when I first started this video, uh, I went to do this. It was, this was off. I went through the whole process of loosening the string, loosening the jam nut, sliding it back a sixteenth of an inch at a time. Uh, and this jam screw was actually in the second hole at that point. Uh, so, needless to say, a 15 minutes went by before I finally got it. And then I looked at the camera and realized that I didn't press the record button. You know, that just made my day. Went through all that, didn't repress the, the didn't press the record button. Whole lot of fun. All right, so um, basically, my intonation set, and I've already checked the other strings and got those adjusted. So they're all set for 440 pitch, which is standard tuning. Um, so our next step is going to be obviously a sound sample. Uh, in 1.5. Um, video. I gave you a sound sample of the uh, 435 pitch with the intonation set for 435. So in part three, I'll give you a sound sample standard tuning 440 pitch with the intonation set for 440. And uh, we're going to test out a theory that I have about once the uh, pitch is set for 440 standard tuning, leaving it there and then doing alternate tunings on the strings themselves and see what kind of a difference we get with that. Uh, I have a feeling that the pro guitar techs out there for you know these huge bands have uh, been keeping secrets from us and uh, I'm going to test that theory out. So uh, stay tuned for part three and uh, hopefully you got a little bit out of this. Oh, and one more thing. I know I forgot to mention something. Uh, on the tuner, of course, power shut off. When you're tuning and you're checking that 12th fret, it's a, again, if the needle's over here, you know you need to move the saddle back a 16th of an inch at a time. If the needle is this way, on this side, you need to move the saddle forward a 16th of an inch at a time. And the whole process is very time consuming. So I, again, I cannot say enough about locking down that tremolo, getting you a good tuner like this that actually has a needle and the little LEDs here that light up, comes in very handy. All right, uh, and again, I've had this tuner, she's probably, uh, I'd say about 10 years. But it's a, uh, it's a Boss TU-70 tuner. You get your pitch control. It's got a built-in mic. You got your modes. You can uh, not just tune um, your regular six string, but you can also tune a bass guitar as well. So hey, it's a good little tuner. It's done its trick for me for a few years now. So 
All right, uh, so that'll take care of that. And again, Floyd Roses from the factory. If you expect the intonation to be perfect, when you get that guitar at home, you pull it out of the box, you tune it with your regular tuner, I doubt the intonation is going to be set. So you got a choice of doing it my way <laughs> or taking it to a guitar shop and having them do it. Uh, which case you may not have your guitar back for a couple days depending on how busy they are. All right. Well, we'll see you again in uh, part three and uh, enjoy the rest of your day or evening as the case may be. And uh, we'll get to it in part three with some sound samples. All right. Thanks and have a great day.